Right, here we are in the workshop again. I won't be staying in this workshop too long today because it's absolutely boiling. It's really hot today, so I don't know how long I'm going to stay in here for because it's a wooden shed and it gets really hot. Uh, if anybody knows and followed my videos, I, uh, I do a series of videos showing people how to overcome problems um, on motorbikes or engine, anything to do with engineering. I'm not trying to pre preach to uh, professional mechanics or anything, but it's mostly based down to mechanics. And today, what we're doing is trying to get this flywheel off this um, Benelli engine because the points and the coil at the back of it and the points have never been probably never been changed or cleaned the bike's been stuck for donkey's years so I need to get the points out and give them a good cleaning and just have a look at everything and I like to get the flywheel off in case it ever has to come off in the future because these things can be notoriously tight don't even consider trying to get one of these flywheels off without one of these pullers now I'll, I'll just say a little bit thing about these pullers uh, first of all is uh, when I came to pull this off I measured the the size of it and it's 27 millimeters I ordered a 27 millimeter puller on eBay and it came with left-handed thread the puller that came with left-handed thread and it didn't, didn't mention out about left-handed thread so just be aware because this is right-handed thread so th th there's loads of different ones of these anyway I've got this now and I've put it, I've put it in, it's the right thread, it's the right size but it's only going in about two or three threads into the flywheel and I've tried taking this up and this is super tight, this is really tight I've left it on for half an hour, it's been tightened up uh, I've tapped it lightly with a hammer, it's not coming off and I don't want to tighten it anymore in case I pull that thread out so what's my options? Well the option is that I, I uh, try and do something with this thread on this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down with a thread file I'll show you where a thread file is the other thing I could run a little axe saw around the grooves to make them a bit deeper or I could put it in the lathe and, and, and slightly put a lead on it because I don't like this, it's not in far enough uh, this is so tight I've actually had the flywheel in the vise um, to try and get it off and it's it's not moving I, I, I could just butcher it off with a big big socket I could put a big socket a big bar on and either it would go or it would break the thread but you only get one chance at doing something like this so you, you want to be give your first chance the best chance so I'm gonna make sure I get that in there a good two or three threads further before I try and uh, pull it off and then it's going to have to come off so I'll take this out and uh, I'll show you what to do what I'm, what I'm going to do to try and get that in there further ok thread file what is it so what you've got here is this is the extractor tool <coughs> and I'm going to take this coating off don't want to take any metal off just want to relieve some of this metal this coating on here so what you have here it's like a, it's a file but it's got grooves on different teeth on on the end here these are the sizes so what you do is you marry up the size of that thread with your thread what you are you're trying to do so 20 I know this is 24 so you get that thread there you push it into the groove like that sometimes you have to just get the nearest one but that's a 24 that, that fits in that fits in there so what you do then is you put the thread on onto a good bit and just work at it it, it appears that it's not doing anything you don't see like loads of metal coming off or filings or anything like that and sometimes you think it's not doing anything this but you'd be surprised and you can use one of these thread files for all sorts of things 
it's one of them tools that you think I'd never use it I tell you what I've had this 40 years this thing's pulled me out the mire more times than I occur to remember if you've got a thread and it's got and it's got a cut it's been cross threaded you just put something in it's cross threaded you can't get you, you'll always follow that that bad thread so what you do is you get onto a good part and you, you, you file it and to go onto the bad part of the, of the cross thread and it kind of pushes the thread back into position it's an ama amazing bit of kit it really is so you just work at it like that so you can use it for rusty threads cross threads it like this where there's I think it's too much material I think there's too much coating on here zinc or whatever it is and all I'm doing is trying to get rid of that um, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like it's taking anything off but it does it makes a big big difference I've used it hundreds of times this usually for cross threads cross threads and when threads have been damaged they've been hit and they put a flat on them and you can't get the nut on just work at this for five minutes with one of these and bring the thread back it's an amazing tool so that's where it is thread file they're not that expensive I've got two I've got this one I've got a bigger one see so it says on the Whitworth DIGM whatever that is another symbol foreign so those are all the sizes of I've, I've had these that young I've never actually looked at 11 sixteenths, 5 eighths, half inch, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, 14 gauge, 16 gauge. That's a common one on motorbikes, 26, 26 threads per inch. You use that a lot. So if you ever have a bit of spare money, get yourself one of them. Right, I've put it in, I've got it in about another two threads and I've used this to put it in. The flywheel's in, in the vise so it can't turn. I don't like to lock the crankshaft or, or the con rod because you're putting stress on the crank. Flywheel's in the vise, you can see there, and I've got the Stillisons on and this is now, that's tight and I think it's in a boot about four threads it's still tight but I think I'm gonna go for it and give it a go right this is the old irresistible force an immovable object jeepers I know you can smack the bolt on the end but you really shouldn't be knocking a magnet because it destroys the magnetism the, the uh, atoms or whatever it is in the magnet line up and then when you bang them with a the hammer it knocks them out of sync but I think I'm going to give it a go right I've slackened the bolt off and I've tightened up another turn I've got another turn out of it with, with, the, uh, with the pipe wrench so I'm going to give it another go now. I've had these before, but I'm just like this. I had one on the Villiers one day, and he had a self-extracting nut on here to pull the flywheel off. The nut pulls the flywheel off, and it sheared all the bolts because it was that tight. You would think if you just take the nut off on a taper, it would come off, but something very strange happens with the, with the Morse taper. They're extremely tight. And it seems to be the longer they're on there, the tighter they get. I don't know what the reason is, I don't know. I have no explanation for it, but these things can be very, very tight. And don't even try to get one off of it, one of these pullers. I'm going to go with the big screw. So, this is it. I've just put back on the bench and... I'm not sure this is actually on a taper or it's just on a, on a straight shaft because normally a Morse taper 
it's all or nothing it just pulls off this this might be a straight just a straight shaft magnets are good anyway you know it is a Morse taper but there's a bit of corrosion in there a little bit of rust it wouldn't be the rust that would be holding it but it's just a taper the magnets good look at that Reiki that's been off before I think or something. What the hell? What's that? The keyway is in there. That's a strange leaking. It's got like a like a piece taken out there. I haven't seen anything like that before. Anyway, it's off and it was tight and the keyway is still in there there's a little bit of rust but uh, it's just that these taper fits there's the fantastic the fantastic bit of engineering they're on the they seem to be the longer they're on there the more difficult it is to get off if you try and get that off any other way you have to damage the magnets because when you when you bash at this thing it destroys the magnetism and then you've got the coils at the back and oh, for the sake of it, that cost me 12 quid that puller but if you didn't have one of these you would never never have got that puller into that thread fair enough I got it in about four threads about 10 minutes with that just cleaning the uh, I think it's what it is it's these this is the nickel surface or whatever it is they've, they've coated it with some nickel or whatever it is and it's just put that couple of thousandths of an inch extra on the thread and with it being a fine thread it was just jamming up so you've got to get rid of that that uh, surface and I actually put a little tiny lead on in the, in, on the grinder as well just a, little, just a ground a little taper on the first thread so I'll let you see that's it can't really see so I just took the first thread off on the grinder and it was into about the you can see where it was in it was in about four threads now before I before I used the the, the um, thread file I was only going in probably one and a half to two threads and I was frightened of <coughs> is the puller would pull the thread out of there and then you're in trouble then all right so this is tip the ammeter mechanics again just be very very aware when you're pulling flywheels off they can be extremely